Hi everyone, welcome to Planet Health video. Um, episode 20 we're at, Brad. And I'd like to introduce Brad Parkinson, who's going to share us his words of wisdom about asthma. Wow, so how you. are you, Brad? Yeah, good. Thanks, Shannon. Um, how, how's yourself? Yeah, super. And how's the weather over there in New South Wales? Um, yeah, actually, I haven't been outside today. Um, it's not too bad. It's a bit of blue sky. Uh, we've had pretty grey Melbourne-like weather, actually. So um, it's good to see a bit of blue sky today. Oh, okay. We need to get the sunshine for our vitamin D, Brad. We Don't do. And vitamin D will definitely come up in this conversation, I've got a feeling. Yeah, so we're going to talk about asthma today. And Brad, could you just share with the viewers out there um, the basics of asthma and things that they'll be experiencing, etc., and what's going on behind the scene? Yeah, well, asthma, it's, um, you know, more than 80% of people um, uh, with ast asthma have a, an allergic sensitization. So um, it's tied into allergies um, predominantly, and um, we'll talk a little bit about the mechanism of that as well. Um, and yeah, its prevalence is about 10% in Australian adults, and uh, it's about 11% in this, uh, Australian children have asthma. So it's um, very, uh, very prominent part of, um, uh, especially with children, we're treating a lot, uh, but it's, uh, it's underdiagnosed in adults. So it is out there in adults and um, it tends to be undiagnosed. So it's very common. Uh, and it's, uh, it ties in with things like um, or what you would call atopy or eczema. Um, and mm. uh, that's that whole IgE, um, immunoglobulin E, which is um, the inflammatory marker. Um, we'll talk mm -hmm. a little bit more about that um, regards testing, um, but that's a allergenic inflammatory marker, if you will, um, if uh, mm. we're going to be a bit more accurate there. So when we have an allergy response, and we know that with eczema, um, we've got to really treat that histamine itchiness that comes in the skin. That's, that's all that allergy type response. Uh, and this is part um, of the mechanism behind um, uh, asthma as well. And in recent research, we're also looking at things like um, eosinophils, which is something that people will see on their blood tests quite often and they get blood tests mm -hmm. and that, that can be raised with people with asthma. And um, that's something that they're talking about contributes to the, um, the narrowing of the bronchi bronchioles, um, uh, which is part of the asthma um, pathophysiology. So what's going on with asthma? Um, and we, I, I like to bring this up because uh, um, what I'm seeing more, what's becoming more common or people are becoming more aware of is something called eosinophilic esophagitis, which is the um, <laughs> inflammation of the esophagus uh, and where these prominent, these eosinophils uh, are very prominent. And of course, the esophagus is before we hit the um, the airways, the, the bronchioles and everything in asthma. So that whole area can be triggered. And this is a, a, um, a big part of asthma. There's a lot of triggers um, and, um, you know, different things that can contribute to it. So basically what we're looking at is that wheezing, shortness of breath. Um, and it can be uh, something that comes on from like an allergy type response. Um, some people might get like a, a bee sting or something like that. Um, other people, uh, it might be triggered by sport uh, or the cold can be another one that commonly sets people off. Um, others mm -hmm. can get, get a cold, cold or flu um, and then have complications in the, the lungs and, and, and asthma can be triggered then um, and it becomes quite difficult to breathe. Uh, so, yeah, look, it's a um, uh, very, very frightening condition to have. Um, and if we can't open up those airways and clear those airways, then it, it's, it's extremely dangerous and um, uh, treatment uh, is needed really quite often um, uh, in, in emergency sort of scenarios. So um, uh, now in addition to these airways closing, you can get a, a um, excess of mucus as well. Um, uh, so like a hypersecretion of mucus that also 
floods the airways and blocks the airways too. So uh, these are all things that um, we're aware of uh, when we're looking at asthma as a condition. And um, fortunately, there's a lot of things we can do to treat all those specific areas, the allergies side of it, the narrowing of the airways uh, and the uh, hypersecretion of the mucus can all be um, treated with natural therapies, fortunately. Um, now, in emergency scenarios, you, you know, you, you need um, uh, your common... Don't come to us. So, what's that? Sorry? Don't come to us. In yeah, the don't emergency. come to us. That's right. Yeah, yeah. and that's um, what, what you need, the, the uh, corticosteroids um, uh, that they co that's commonly used um, uh, and the beta, ag um, beta agonists. Um, and uh, that's uh, the the um, the puffers and so forth. Um, you need those to really open up the airways and sort things out. And then the corticosteroids are reducing any inflammation there. So um, mm -hmm. uh, that sort of inflammatory response um, that's uh, initiated with that al al allergy type response. Yeah. So so what I hear this to summarise what you said is that exacerbation and inflammation cascade in the mucous membranes and mm -hmm. um, those mucous membranes run down the esophagus they're in the sinus they're in the lungs they're in the gut as well so there's a trigger bee sting or food or pollen or whatever yep and then it's the cascade of inflammation goes up to a point of of um severity so our job is to get it much earlier and bring it down and modulate it yeah or avoid those closing of the lungs altogether. Yeah. Um, so, no, so no matter who you are out there, um, if you're suffering from asthma, it's a long-term marathon, not a sprint. So the the initial steroid will work, but uh, in the preventative treatment, it's it's a longer term to modulate that immune response down. Definitely, definitely. Um, and that's and where we come into it. Yeah, and look, certainly, and, and what we know, um, you know, as part of some of the causes of this condition too, we, we talked about the allergy response. And so, um, uh, you know, smoking, exposure to pets, carpets, um, you know, history of eczema, um, hay fever, the, the, the family history of those things um, increase the likelihood of asthma. Um, and uh, look, it's... Um, also important to mention some of the nutrient variables here as well. So, you know, a decrease mm. in fresh fruit and vegetables have, has been attributed to that. And it's likely to look at things like all your um, antioxidant compounds and the flavonoids, and in particular, something like quercetin, um, which is something that's very good at um, uh, stopping that uh, allergy type response or um, reducing the severity of it. Uh, so we get a lot of the good bioflavonoids, um, whether it's quercetin or rutin uh, and other ones from fresh fruit and veg. And vitamin C plays a huge role there too as well. So uh, vitamin C will lessen the severity of that allergy type reaction. Now also um, plays a big role, what plays a big role too is your omega-3, omega-6 ratios. So if you've got high omega-6 in your diet, which a lot of people um, do if they're on a standard Australian diet, uh, then they're going to have pro-inflammatory uh, pathways activated. And this leads to a, a inflammatory cytokine that's indicated here is a leukotriene 4 or um, LTB4. Um, that whole cascade, that uh, um, area of cytokines will cause inflammation and ongoing inflammation and, um, and make the condition more chronic um, and not just mm -hmm. a um, something that appears randomly, it'll, it'll be something that people have to uh, be aware of all the time. So um, getting those omega-3 levels up um, and reducing omega-6 is, is, is critical. Um, and it's uh, certainly something we, we're looking into as soon as we take on this condition to make sure that ratio is right as well. So, yeah, and just yeah. to simplify it for the people watching, mm -hmm. of uh, you talked about the leukotriene fours. Um, so just to simplify it, Brad's talking about the cascade. There's a imagine like a waterfall and it flows down into these leukotrienes and that's called a Cox and Lock series. And they have different functions in the body, but basically it's the accelerator is on for inflammation. Mm -hmm. So that's going, uh, the pedal's right, right down. 
And so the fish oil the, uh, or the omega-3s and omega-6 ratios are helping to take ease that off. Just yeah. for the average person who might get too bogged down mm -hmm. with the yeah, technology. Look, we, we, we have that hammered into us um, in our initial learnings. And, um, and yeah, it's definitely something um, we don't uh, ignore the omega-3, omega-6 side of things, and especially with this condition too. So, um, and of course, like stress and anxiety play a big role. And we see this in young kids quite um, easy when they get a little bit anxious and, um, and stressed out. It can make things worse as well. Um, so uh, you know, it's, um, again, I think the, um, uh, the, the, the stress can trigger mast cell release um, and um, uh, the histamine and leukotrienes are, are then further released as well down, through that pathway as well. Uh, so, yeah. Awesome. So let's just touch on a little bit. You've mentioned some things like the dust, etc. but let's just focus a little bit more on the diet and lifestyle. So, for example, the common that everyone would know is about the dust mites and yeah. airing the house and vacuuming and that. But what other things could people do? Yeah, look, dairy is a huge one in this one. Like, um, mm. dairy seems to um, act as a, a pro-inflammatory food, partic particularly milks, um, and uh, uh, we see that quite often. Um, now, another thing that a lot of people miss, and um, that uh, I, I've been picking up a bit in clinic lately for these for asthma and similar conditions. Um, uh, allergy type related conditions are things like MSG, uh, flavor enhancers. Um, th these things can really um, trigger people up, or your glutamates, so these, they're excitatory. Um, so, um, they, again, they, they can start that cascade of pro, pro inflammatory pathways. Um, and usually it's not going to affect the people all the time, but, um, uh, but, if they're constantly, if, I like to talk about allergenic load. So if you're constantly exposed to pet stander, um, you know, it might be grasses, it might be pollens, you know, smoke, smoking is huge for asthma too. Um, if you're a parent and you're smoking around your children, they're like, my, I can't remember the percentage, but it's, it's quite high percentage likely they're going to have asthma. Um, so uh, if you're constantly exposed by these allergenic, things or set things that setting your allergies off then there's a good chance than that you're you're going to be easily responding responding to something like a flavor enhancer that's put in the foods and so forth too because your um uh, your immune system that um t helper 2 is very primed and, and um, ready to respond uh, so your immune system um, needs to remain in balance and it's um if it's constantly being um thrown out of whack or thrown um out of balance um, then you're going to be more sensitive to things like uh, flavor enhancers and sulfites mm -hmm. in foods is another one as well. Preservatives and colorings. These are all things you've got to really try and avoid. Um, and, uh, you know, it's not just enough to, to if you go out cooking and say, oh, okay, no MSG, because everyone's doing no MSG now, but there's other glutamates and things like yeast ex extract and everything that's put in there that'll have the same effect. It's not just specifically MSG now. Everyone's smart enough to sort of not add that and they can say they don't have MSG, but there's other things. And it might be E627 or something like that. Um, and that'll be uh, uh, enough to be a little bit of a trigger too. Um, and like I said, people say, oh, well, I had that food before and I was fine. Well, yeah, you might not have been exposed to all these other allergens at the same time, or your immune system might not have been as compromised as it was then. So uh, I think that's important that we're constantly trying to keep that immune system balanced. Um, and then that sort of leads into specific nutrients like our vitamin A, zinc, and vitamin D. They're what we call immune modulators. And they balance the immune system and, and we're constantly trying to get that, um, uh, keep, keep our immune system in balance. Yeah, I'll share a true story. Um, you mentioned about milk, but uh, dairy products. It's yep. such a simple one, but my brother, older brother had asthma and he was on a um, serotide and a Ventolin taking it daily. And I tell him, um, as a child, I heard from my mother, we had a goat because he had allergies 
But I kept telling him and, you know, stop the dairy, stop the dairy. And mm-hmm. he saw it on television. He didn't listen to his younger brother. But as soon as he stopped, he was amazed. Oh, my asthma's gone. And lucky for him, it was something very simple. Yeah. So Look, uh, it's something I haven't touched on yet, too. It's important to talk about the um, microbiome here, too, because we, we mm. tend to go there with gut health. Um, but it plays a huge role in respiratory health as well. Um, in everything. Um, when, we, when we actually uh, do treat the gut, too, um, with certain uh, herbs, we've noticed this as well. There's a reflex action from the gut cells to the respiratory cells too. So what we're doing to the gut, we're often repairing the respiratory um, uh, cells as well. So um, that mucosal mm. wall too. So um, and just uh, out of curiosity too, the the um, uh, anti- or use of antibiotics in the first year of life is associated with um, uh, asthma in later life. So we know that by disrupting the, the microbiome with antibiotics can cause uh, or be contributing to um, asthma in later, later life. So um, that's a huge one too. We've got to keep uh, the microbiome in, in, um, in a good place or in balance again, um, uh, mm-hmm. which makes sense too, because that's so, uh, so connected to everything, including the immune system, which we're, we're constantly trying to keep in balance as well. Yeah, there've also been some studies with uh, pregnant mothers taking probiotics and it reduces the um, the chance of the child developing asthma. Yep. So back to the probiotics in the gut and the microbiome. And the microbiome always comes up for everything. It does, always. yeah. Yep. Yeah, and uh, I think that's, that's all we're there. Uh, but, so let's dive into... Um, the the magic herbs or the nutrients or some keys there of yeah well look that... I'll, I'll just mention um, we often talk about testing at this time of the the videos and uh, look while there's um, uh, there's usually a lot we figure out with case taking and it's always the best approach to try and draw um, a lot from case taking um, a lot of people probably have spoken to the doctors and may have even had some scratch testing done for allergies and so forth or, or the rust tests um, and that, that's looking at that IgE that allergy type component again um, and that can be important to see the severity of your reaction to things like animal dander pollens etc mm-hmm. um, so that's always something um, with good information that can be taken on board now we can also cover IgE in food allergy testing too. So if we're getting that high allergenic load um, from foods in addition to external uh, stresses or external triggers, um, we can get a, a better idea if there's, uh, a, a, um, you know, should we, should, should the patient have less of a certain food or are they having too much of a food that just need to settle that down for a bit and then reintroduce it later? Um, could be contributing to it. And then like we talked, I talked a little bit about new modulators with nutrients and vitamin D is one of those. And of course, getting your vitamin D test um, through your GP um, or, you know, we can arrange that too, um, is very important too. Because look, more and more now, I'm really pushing my patients to find out their vitamin D status because Quite often, we need to go in um, uh, and, and really give them a good dose of vitamin D, not just the, the, uh, the 1,000 IU daily recommended from uh, your GP. That's usually doing nothing. Um, so uh, we need to really work out um, that we're not, uh, we're not overdosing, but we need to get it up high enough to have a, a beneficial effect as well. And look, zinc can be tested as blood tests and um, uh, uh, taste tests, hair tests and so forth. Some of them were a bit iffy um, and even with um, blood tests are we testing the absorption into the cell and so forth. So some of those can be a bit tricky but good case taking usually weeds out people's zinc status too because um, uh, mm-hmm. um, uh, that can be related to poor sleep and everything as well if their zinc's low. So um, yeah, uh, vitamin A, um, there's not really any testing I'm familiar with with vitamin A. Have you heard of anything there? No. 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 Um, uh, another one, though, I always usually try and increase people's beta carotene levels and have, give them cofactors, yeah. make sure their cofactors to convert it to vitamin A. And that usually suffices, uh, but often, though, um, 
uh, especially in things like treating acne and so forth, you might have to go high dose vitamin A. Uh, and that again, has to come down to good case taking for, for working that one out there too. Yes. But uh, even a dose um, fat soluble vitamin like vitamin A, a dose for um, you know a month or so, it, highly unlikely it would do any harm. Um, but that's always what, uh, what why it's important to, to take a good case and mm -hmm. and know the patient's full history. Yep, and treat them the right way without doing any harm. Yeah, but uh, just the same with the vitamin D. Um, when Brad says taking a higher dose, a thousand is thousand international units is not high enough. It's uh, case by case with the patient, but knowing it's not forever, yep. it's not going to be uh, ten thousand international units for several years. It's uh, short term, getting a benefit, and then the patient recovers quickly, and then we've got the levels up. Mm -hmm. And it yep. always comes back to a good naturopath, like yeah. Brad. Yep. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> That's the part of the experience too. Yeah. So let's jump jump into the herbs and nutrients. So, mm -hmm. what are our uh, magic herbs? Well, yeah. Look, I, I I don't know if I'll get too specific with herbs. I, I'll mention more the actions and and everything as well. I might I might throw a few of my favourites in there because I can't help myself. But um, um, uh, well, we talked a little bit about the constriction of the bronchioles, so the constriction of the airways in the lungs. We need to dilate them. We need to um, have them expand. So it's important that um, we can do that. So there's some absolute uh, uh, fantastic herbs that can do that. One that comes to mind is coleus um, that I use. Um, and um, yeah, it, now that may not be suitable for everybody, especially if someone's got low blood pressure, you don't necessarily want to give them that. But um, uh, it can it take the gut a little bit too, sometimes with people with diarrhea. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, yeah. look, and, it right to the person. Yeah, yeah, so you know, tablet can often be better than liquid herbs in, in that sense. But um, uh, yeah, then the mucolytics as well. So anything that can thin the mucus. Um, so when the airways are constricted and they fill up with mucus or the mucus is coming from the inflammation, uh, then we really want to thin that out so it's easily expectorated so people can get it out of their lungs and um, essentially not get pneumonia or, or, or drown basically. Um, and then the allergy um, aspect to it all, there's a lot we can do there. Um, uh, a lot of the herbs will have, have been naturally full of high amounts of quercetin and other flavonoids. Um, and they'll, they'll help um, stabilize mast cells uh, and prevent the release of the histamine and the, the leukotrienes. Uh, so um, th that's, that's very good, you know, basil scale cap, albizia are very good herbs with that. Uh, mm -hmm. Rosmaric acids that are, that's found in rosemary and other, her other herbs have that too, um, can work on that pathway in a different area too. So um, uh, it all depends on the individual when we start talking herbs because we do have quite a mm -hmm. few that we can choose from uh, and then it's just a matter of lining them up for um, what else is going on for the individual. And then nutrients, we've mentioned zinc, vitamin A, vitamin D, all very important to make sure that they're in balance. Um, uh, and uh, look, I think it's important to note too that you don't have to be deficient in a nutrient. You, you might just have insufficiency, uh, which mm, is uh, insufficient amounts, um, especially when you're treating a condition. Um, so uh, lo what, a lot of the time we're looking at just getting your levels up to a sufficient amount, not necessarily exceeding that. Um, in some cases, um, doing high dose nutrients can have certain benefits, um, but you'd usually like to do that short term. Um, and it's, it's a little bit tricky, that sort of dosing. And, and uh, it's, um, when people try and take on that stuff, uh, take on board that, uh, uh, like go to a health shop and get the, the, your vitamin C off the shelf or whatever, um, or of course, Seton or it might be the dosing vitamin D, they quite often really have no idea of, of dosing and, and uh, timing of it. And quite often I see people that'll be having things like iron, zinc and calcium all together um, through different supplements and they all compete and it's all 
pointless. And that's why that's why multis are always a little bit suspect. You've got to be careful um, to uh, not rely too much on uh, multivitamins in that regards too. So um, there's a lot to dosing, and um, you know I always take a very strategic approach with all my patients with dosing. Um, different things and the com combining the different nutrients with the herbs too and then we're throwing in like omega-3 um, would be another one you'd put in there too that you um, again omega-3 buying your big thing tub of 400 caps from the, the chemist chuck it out because it's a they're it's a they're rubbish they're they're they often the, the quality of the oil itself is is compromised um, and if you break it open, you'll often smell really fishy, that off fishy sort of smell. Um, so, yeah, so, and, um, and uh, yeah, it's just, um, uh, there's, uh, there's a big difference between that and a good practitioner brand, good quality fish oil. And usually with the good quality fish oils, you're just taking, you know, two or three a day of those as opposed to six or more of the rubbish ones. So, um, to get like the 20, one. Brad, yeah, try 20 and still. <laughs> Still going, and then you then you're exposed to a bit more toxins as well with the um, um or, or potentially heavy metals and so forth with the uh, cheaper ones too. So uh, yeah, so I think that covers uh, a lot of it. Treating stress and anxiety um, can be huge in this condition too. Uh, and um, of course, we try and educate patients as well. Being aware of all the triggers is is one of the big things, um, and then putting the power back into the patient and understanding, giving them the understanding of all those things and, and then they can self-manage uh, once they learn all about that. Excellent. That's fantastic. I think that's a really great overview of asthma mm -hmm. and you've given some really great little nuggets there that should help people suffering from asthma. And uh, so where can everyone find you, Brad, if they want to take it further and have yeah, a consult look, and dive deeper? Yeah, look, they can find me at bradparkinson.com.au um, or Brad Parkinson Naturopath. I'll come up anywhere on Google there. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm happy to help. Uh, asthma, um, autoimmunity, a lot of gut health. Um, yeah, we, we cover a lot of bases, don't we, Shannon? Yeah, we do. You know, and I'm over here in Perth. Oh, yep. Yeah. yeah. Uh, curamedicine.com.au. And also we've got our project, Planet Health Project, and that's why we're gearing up and sharing all this information to guide people to head across the Planet Health Project where we're helping people globally. Yeah, so thanks, Brad, and I will see you next time. All right, see you again. Bye. Take care. Bye.